I always start with the mute on. I started to talk and that's embarrassing. So let's get down to business with talking about villanelles. So in the course of poetry, there's a few different types of poems that Mr. Haycock really likes. Number one is sonnet, but number one A is probably villanelles. I really love them. And I really enjoyed writing them. I really enjoy teaching them to you all. So I hope that you'll enjoy them as well. So real quick, let me pull up on my screen, my little presentation on villanelles. And I want to talk you through it a little bit and uh, talk about ways, techniques in which to help you a little bit with writing a villanelle and little tricks of the trade. Uh, so hopefully it's not so daunting because it is a little bit tricky. I won't lie. So let me pull that up right now and let's get to it. So uh, villanelles are a French form of poetry and they are 19 lines. Now 19 might sound like a lot we've been writing poems that are 10 and 14 lines, but I promise you, once you see this, it's really like almost half of that because it's kind of like a Mad Lib in a way where you plug and play something that you've already written. And if you don't understand what I mean, you're gonna see in just a moment. And pontoons, you may or may not have covered already, but pontoons also have a similar form in the sense that they have repeating lines and make use of that. So villanelles have a rhyme scheme and pontoons do not. Although you can make a pontoon rhyme, it's not one of the rules, if you will, of that fixed form of poetry. So uh, villanelles are also more lighthearted while pontoons tend to have themes that are a little bit more serious or down and you know dreary. So uh, there are two refrains and these refrains are lines that repeat themselves over and over again. So it's a really good idea to write a villanelle about something where you really wanna have a lot of repetition or hammer a point home. So for instance, when I was in college, I wrote a villanelle that was about driving five hours uh, on a road trip. So, uh, and having to do this continually, riding down the road, thinking about how uh, I wanna be there and how I gotta stop to go to the bathroom, things like that. So think about how anything that you do in your day to day uh, that might be repetitive that you might wanna write about, like just going to school every day online, like that could be a good topic. Um, each line is an iambic pentameter, meaning it has 10 syllables, so just like a sonnet. And there are five ter sets and one quatrain. So five sets of three and then one set of four. So here is the layout of a villanelle. So like I said, it might sound daunting, but it actually, I like it because it, you can have fun with plugging in some of these different parts of the poem. So when I say first refrain, so line number one and line number three rhyme with one another. Line number one and line number three are super important because you're gonna use those over and over again throughout the rest of the poem. So make sure you like your line number one and line number three, and you're gonna see why in just a moment. So the rhyme scheme throughout is ABA in every stanza, and so the very last one is ABAA. So once you have your first stanza or your first tercet written, which is those first three lines, think about this. You are going to copy and paste line number one down here to where line number six is, and line number 12. And then also your second to last line will be the same as line number one. So you just copy and paste that. That's how easy it is. Line number three, kind of the same deal, except for this is gonna go to line number nine and uh, line number 15. And then finally line number 19 is going to also be your third line. So again, you just copy and paste that. So if you were to type this out, just like I have it here on the screen, and then you just plug and play with after you've written your first three lines, you have a good bit of this poem written already. Now, every single B line, remember rhyme scheme going back, all those lines need to rhyme. So the middle line is going to rhyme, but it's always different in each tercet. Um, and the A lines also need to rhyme, which is the first line of each tercet after you leave that first stanza. So again, a lot of this sounds really tricky, but to me, I think it's really fun. And uh, to be honest, I think that it can be a really enjoyable way to write poetry. So like I said, uh, I alluded to earlier, you may or may not have covered a pontoon before, and they, these are similar to pontoons in format, and they're about something repetitive. I kind of got ahead of myself by talking about that. So uh, let's go and take a look at some famous ones. So this is the most famous poem, and I'm not gonna click this right now, but you can go ahead and certainly do that. This presentation's up on Schoology. Uh, Dylan Thomas, do not go gentle into that good night. 
very famous Villanelle, probably the all-time most famous one. You might have even heard it before, even before you started studying my class or uh, learning about Villanelles. And uh, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and listen to an audio recording of reading this because Dylan Thomas was famous for doing dramatic readings of his poetry in person while he was alive. Now, this is another great example of a Villanelle that I found online. Um, and let's just take a look at some of the rules. So I'm not going to read the poem out loud, but let's look at the rules here. So line one, it, it appears here, it appears here, and it appears here. Line three, it appears here, it appears here, and it appears here. So we, uh, we see that Marilyn Hacker kind of plays with the form here by she put this first refrain at the very end rather than uh, the quote unquote proper way. And the, she gets a little bit of artistic license because she's a poet. But uh, nonetheless, we've got our iambic pentameter and we've got our, look at these middle lines. Soul rhymes with casserole and stole and bowl and dole and roll. So those are all words that are B lines. Repossess, less, mess, dress, yes, courtliness, confess. Those are all our A rhymes. So again, it's sticking mostly to the form, although she decided to be a little bit tricky there at the end, which I like that kind of stuff too. So uh, one last thing, thinking about enjambment. And uh, I've mentioned this before, but when we're reading something that has really good enjambment, stanza number two is a great example of this. So stanza number two follows our rhyme scheme here. Now, I'm going to read you poetry the quote unquote wrong way, and then I'm going to read it for you the enjambment way, which is by most scholars' uh, points of view, the proper way to read poetry. So here's the wrong way. Tonight's ragu would be a mess without the red clay casserole. I am obliged to repossess. So uh, we've got these pauses at the end that really accentuate the rhymes. Now, let me read for you, if I can do it without messing it up, the quote-unquote proper way with the enjambment. Tonight's ragu would be a mess without the red clay casserole I am obliged to repossess. So see how I read that all as one sentence? Because that's what it is, is one sentence rather than pausing at the end of lines. And so that's just a little neat thing that I wanted to uh, put it uh, in emphasis here in my presentation for you. It just, you know, for your own reference, for those of you who want to dig a little bit deeper and get the most out of this. So anyhow, hopefully this is helpful for you with Villanelles and uh, all of my materials are available on Schoology. And I guarantee you, if you Google some things like Villanelle template or Villanelle help, you can find all kinds of things online. And there's even, I found, I dare not tell you about this because then maybe some people will rely on it too much rather than writing their own poem. There's a Villanelle generator that I found that can be kind of fun. And again, it's kind of like a Mad Libs. You just plug in some words and then the basic format is already set for you. But remember, the basics are that it needs to be 10 syllables in every single line and you need to follow that ABA rhyme scheme as, until you get to the final stanza, which is a quatrain, and that's ABAA, which finishes off with the second to last line should be line number one and your final line should be line number three. So anyway, good luck and happy writing.